here's another thing I want to talk to you about. It seems to me that both sides are also guilty of this. I watched five speeches, full speeches at CPAC, from the amazingly moronic Ryan Sorba to the <laughs> goofily That's charming... Very kind, yeah. Well, you know, my, my theory on him is he's gay. Because anybody who fights that hard against gay people, you know, I mean, a this bit of is Ted... projection going on. Yeah. Well, you know, and then and then you know the audience boos him, and he b makes his hands like, come on, he goes, yeah, bring it, I love it. Well, that sounds like something you hear at a dive. Anyway, <laughs> um, it seems to me that both sides are guilty of this. They they say nothing positive. It's all negative. I didn't hear. I, I listened to four speeches in, in complete total uh, from beginning to end. I didn't hear a positive. I didn't hear we're good. I didn't hear we have something to offer. I heard they're bad. Uh, we're talking to John Avalon, author of Wingnuts, How the Lunatic Fringe is Hijacking America. Um, you mentioned that independent voters outnumber Republicans or Democrats. Yep. in this country, registered uh, as independents. Um, of those uh, people, um, let's say it's the Tea Party, how many people, I, I don't mean you know raw numbers, obviously, unless you're a savant, how many people, um, and who knows, maybe you are, but how many people there in percentages do you think are normal Americans, upset with the system, who want it to change, as opposed to wing nuts? Well, first of all, uh, let, let's talk about independence in general, because Tea Partiers are not indicative of independence in general. The Tea Party movement is a conservative populist movement. Um, they believe that Washington is not polarized enough. They believe the Republican Party has not been conservative enough. Independent voters, and New Jersey is one of the 11 states where registered independents outnumber Democrats or Republicans, um, is uh, independent voters are overwhelmingly uh, between Democrats and Republicans. They are closer to Republicans on economic issues and closer to Democrats on social issues. So I always say that independent voters in general are fiscally conservative, but socially liberal to libertarian. They are also deeply angry at the hyper-partisanship in Washington. And again, the Tea Partiers want there to be more partisanship, not less. So, so independent voters are, are really increasingly saying stop to Washington dysfunction, to the hate and hyper-partisanship we get pumped up from pundits on television and from the party leaders in Congress. Uh, the Tea Partiers, I don't think, are indicative of, uh, of independent voters in general, with one exception. There is one bridge, which is that the Tea Party began as a fiscal conservative protest. It's a reaction to bailout backlash, frustration at the overspending, deficits, and debt. Um, I think the, 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 the Democratic Congress misread President Obama's mandate. Um, they misinterpreted it as a liberal ideological victory when it was not. Um, and that ended up you know, spurring a lot of anger from folks who voted for him uh, because he had called for a new era of fiscal responsibility. He appealed, uh, you know, promised to transcend the old divides of left and right, black and white. Um, and, and, and what they got from Washington uh, you know, is, a, is more of the same with regards to more hyper-partisanship. And no question, Republicans haven't exactly been reaching out. They've, they're largely to blame for the dynamic here as well. And even worse, they're trying to exploit it. But, uh, See, here's what I don't understand. Uh, the, the, the people at the, at the Tea Party, as you said, are conservatives who are you know, against, essentially against taxation. And yet these are the same people who I've heard say, and you've heard say, keep your hands off my Medicare. Well, where do they think this comes from? The Medicaid fairy? I mean... <laughs> That's what I don't, you know, it's like when, I, I use this all the time, Craig T. Nelson, who, because he has to pay taxes because he's rich, is now a conservative, was on Fox and he said, no government helped me, I got by when I was young on food stamps and welfare. Where, where do they think this comes from? Um, it seems to me there's a lot of misinformation or else these people, and I'm not trying to be condescending, but that's, that's a stupid statement. It, it, it is, and I, I saw in my book, I mean, I go through some of the, the signs I've seen of protests, and one of them was, keep your hands off my Medicare. Uh, you know, we're dealing with a, pla a place well beyond reason. I mean, it's not just what I call the fright wing of politics, the birthers and the truthers. Um, you know, there's a chapter in my book called um, How Obama Became Hitler, a Communist, and the Antichrist. <laughs> that sort of traces wow. you know, how these insane rumors get started, who pumps them up, how they proliferate. Um, but clearly, you're dealing with a place well beyond reason. You are dealing, uh, even worse, people kind of 
again, pumping up hate in the service of hyperpartisanship, and it ends up being an incitement. It ends up deranging people. Otherwise, good people end up demonizing uh, political figures who disagree with them. They end up demonizing the President of the United States. And ironically, they consider themselves the defenders uh, of, of, the, of the American heritage, and they try to wrap their crazy up in the Constitution, but they're actually doing violence to it by fundamentally doing this divide-to-conquer strategy and identifying their fellow Americans as enemies. That's a dynamic that is deeply, deeply disturbing. It's happening right now, and we need to stand up to it and call it out before it gets but when people, more out of control. I'm sorry, but when people stand up and call it out, it seems almost that the attitude, and I fault the mainstream press for this, it seems to me that the attitude is, oh, look, here are some people who are saying really wild and wacky things. Meanwhile, let's see what Paris Hilton's doing. I don't think they're, they're not taken seriously. It's almost like having a pet snake. Oh, I have to defang it? Oh, ow, that hurts. You make a great point, and that's a large part why I wrote the book. Because I think, you know, it, it's a mistake to dismiss wingnuts as simply eccentric color on the fringes of the political landscape. They have real influence and more power than ever before because the parties are more polarized than ever before because they've been able to rig the system through redistricting, because of the rise of partisan media that reinforces and incites, because of the echo chamber of the Internet that becomes an incubator for extremism. You know, the wingnuts are more powerful than ever before, and that's why we need to take it seriously. It is a dark, it is in many cases absurdly funny when, when these people embrace, you know, conspiracy theories. And, you know, we've seen this before. The John Birch Society, which was a co-sponsor of CPAC this year, back in the early 1960s, accused President Eisenhower, a Republican, of being a Soviet spy. So, you know, there's something darkly absurd and funny about those statements, but beneath it all is something deadly serious that we need to take seriously and have the courage to confront it, not just dismiss it. I want to thank you very, very much for your time, John Avalon, uh, the author of Wingnuts, How the Lunatic Fringe is Hijacking America. I'm sorry that this book is so funny, but it <laughs> is. <laughs> and thank I, I you, and I hope it sells. Thank you. That's my pleasure, and I hope it sells a lot, and thank you for your time. Thank you.